You've all been asking for it. Times are hard, so I'm finally doing it. I have bought eight of the most popular cheap tires I could find available on the market today, and I'll be testing to find out exactly which is best, but also to work out how best the best really is. I've of course included a premium tire, which is none other than the brand new, already multiple test winning Continental Premium Contact 7. Can any of these eight tires get anywhere close or even beat the more expensive premium tire? Let's find out. Okay, so I wanted to start this video a little bit differently with a wet braking demonstration because that's where premium tires make the difference and you're gonna hear me say that a lot, I'm afraid. What we've done is we have set this up. We're currently on the premium Continental Premium Contact 7. We've set up my best friend in the world, Foamy, as the target. So in theory, I've given it a car length grace. We're gonna drive him at 100 kilometers an hour, 62 miles an hour and then just jump on the brakes and see how close we get. Oh, that feels so bad. Oh, great success. We didn't kill him. I'm actually nervous about this. Remember, he has a one meter or three foot if you're an American buffer zone from where the Continental stopped, the premium tire. Wet braking is key criteria because that's where most of the accidents happen. So I'm going in at the same speed on the same line i'll be breaking at exactly the same point and we'll be seeing how my beautiful friend survives this oh, no. Okay, so now we've seen the rather shocking braking performance of some of the budget tires and most of the budget tires. How does that translate to wet handling? Well, the Continental is still in a league of its own. And would you believe I'm not on the Continental right now? The Continental was poised, the car felt balanced and predictable and high levels of grip and it was, it was really enjoyable to drive but the rest of the tires, less so. The best of the rest was the Tomcat, 4.4 seconds behind the Continental, and the worst of the rest was the Double Coin, another 7.1 seconds behind the Tomcat. So the spread between premium and the best cheap tire is smaller than the best cheap tire to the worst cheap tire, so keep that in mind. I think that's a very important statistic. While the Tomcat couldn't quite match the poison balance of the Continental, it was, it was nice to drive. It had good balance, good understeer balance primary, understeer safe, but th there was no surprises. Shame I can't say that around the rest of the tires. This was particularly highlighted by the next fastest tire, which was the Nankang. The grip was excellent, but the balance was just oversteery, oversteery, oversteery. As a, can you guess what tire I'm on? As a wet track day tire, I think the Nankang, excuse me, as a, as a wet track day tire, so I'm gonna try and drive a little bit slower here. As a wet track day tire, I think the Nankang is actually quite a good value tire because it teaches you about car control and the grip levels are good. And I've seen in other tests, the wear is excellent, but that's not really what you want for the road, is it? Devante, Windrun, Triangle and Max Trex were next all on fairly similar tires and all struggling to really communicate what was going on. It was a recurring theme that you just lost a bit of understanding of what was going on underneath you. And that, that comes in at quite pedestrian speeds in the wet because the tire grip is so low. So it was a bit frustrating, especially the understeer mid corner. You just, oh, you'd just be sliding and sliding and sliding. And you, I think you'd really notice that on the road. The retreaded King Miler was next. Now, this is my first experience with a retread tire and I didn't really know what to expect because the reports online are anything between amazing and a complete disaster. You know what, it was neither of those. It just felt like another budget tire. Like the way the tire responded initially to steering felt quite good, but the compound didn't feel like it could keep up with the grip demands I, I really wanted. And like the other tires, you just end up with a lot of understeer. Finally, the double coin. Not only was this the slowest, mostly because of huge amounts of understeer, 
But every now and again, while you're understeering, you'd get huge amounts of oversteer and you'd have no idea why. You'd tip into a corner like this, steady state throw, a little bit of understeer, and then all of a sudden, well. Well, if that's not a demonstration, I don't know what is. So sadly, that's not been filmed from the outside, but uh, don't buy budget tires, guys. Don't buy really, really cheap, bad budget tires. I genuinely wasn't trying to spin, and that went around really quickly. So there we go. I think I might have just proven my point. I'm very happy with the timing of that. Frick, let's go see if any of them are better in the dry. Now I've gotten over my little spin, let's talk about the dry performance of the tires, which is both dry braking, which is very important, and dry handling, which is broken down into lap time, and subjective handling, which includes lane changes like this and how stable the car is at the back. And as we've seen in the wet, it can be a mixed bag. Now in terms of braking, the Continental was the best. And while the differences were a lot smaller in the wet, around 7% or a car length, because of how quickly you slow down in the dry and how short a distance it is, the point of impact from the accident is also magnified. So I know that doesn't make much sense because I've explained it terribly, but listen to this. From 100 kilometers an hour, or 62 miles an hour, where you've stopped on the Continental, you'll only be doing 26 kilometers an hour on the Tomcat, which was the best of the budget, and you'll be doing 34 kilometers an hour on the Triangle, which was the worst. I don't know about you, I don't want to hit anyone at 26 or 34 kilometers an hour because that's going to be expensive. The lap times, well, they weren't a massive amount apart because this is a Golf 1.5, it doesn't have the most power and it's a short lap. And while we're leaning a lot on the tires laterally, the dry just dry off and squeezes the group together. But there were some good tires of the group and there were some bad tires of the group, so let's quickly go over that. The wind run was my favorite. It didn't quite feel premium level, but in terms of steering response and feel and the balance of the car, it was a little bit understeering, understeer safe, uh, but it was responsive. I enjoyed it. And then the Tomcat, like in the wet, the Tomcat was very good. I'm pretty much all round impressed with this Tomcat. I'm starting to think I haven't actually gone through the prices and like memorized them yet, but perhaps the Tomcat is probably the most expensive of these cheap tires. That would make sense in line with its performance. As in the wet, the Nankang did feel sporty and felt a little bit oversteery, but for a 16 inch tire, if you want a bit of fun on track, I'd go with the Nankang because it just seemed to take everything well. I've seen this before on many different tests and many different sizes. Nankangs perhaps don't have the most grip, but they deliver the grip in a fun way. I'm not sure if fun's the right way. Fun for track, not so fun for road. As for the retreaded King Myler, well, that felt very good in steering. The initial steering response and how it loaded up, that felt good. So it felt like the carcass was good, but then like in the wet, the compound just couldn't keep up. So what we found in the wet was just magnified in the dry, because obviously the loading uh, really magnifies things. So the steering response felt even better than it did in the wet, but then the compound just uh, it kind of screeched along. The double coin and the Devante were the slowest of the group. The Devante steering felt fine sublimit actually. So on the way and round the oval when we're doing our our tests um, it felt quite stable but on track there were just heaps of understeer and no spinning this time on a double coin but boy it was just it was just a difficult tire to drive and not something i enjoyed i often enjoy driving difficult tires around dry handling because it's a challenge but this was more a guessing game if you've seen the full premium test you'll know that for a premium tire the premium contact 7 is certainly not the best in pass by noise and rolling resistance so is this where one of the cheap tires can finally get a category win? It actually is. Three of the cheap tires were quieter for external pass by noise, but that isn't really a category that affects drivers too much. And the wind run was even more comfortable. The wind run and Tomcat also had better rolling resistance than the Continental. That was less than 2% better. And as we've seen in the other test, the Continental was quite a bit behind the best tire in that test. So this isn't really a huge win for the cheap tires. Usually I go through each tire one by one, but instead I'm going to keep this short and direct you to the tire reviews website linked in the description to go through all the data there. Plus you can also adjust the score weighting to find out exactly which tire fits your needs and budgets and etc. Do I recommend fitting any of them? Well, not really and here's why. The Continental won the premium test by 1.5% over the second place Pirelli. In terms of tire testing, that is a huge overall advantage as second to sixth places in that test were covered by just 0.8%. In this test, the Continental was almost 8% better than second place overall and over 20% better than last. 
Sure, some of the cheap tyres were good around dry handling. The Nankang was only half a second slower, but none of them were close in the wet, and wet braking was pretty much a huge disaster for all of them. If you're in a situation where you need to save some money on tyres, I'd suggest looking at the Tomcat, and if you want a cheap, fun 16-inch track day tyre, the Nankang will certainly teach you a lot about sliding. Finally, the remold or retread tyre, whatever you want to call them. These are often sold on the premise that they use premium carcasses, so have a better overall performance than traditional budget tyres for the same price. But in this test, we found literally no evidence of that, with the King Myler retread remold finishing seventh of nine. Spending money on tyres really does make a difference. Go check out all the data on tyre reviews. Any questions, please ask below. And as always, safe motoring. <laughs>